Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to carry on working on our fantasy building and we're going to be making a tiled roof. So if you haven't been following this along, there's a link to the playlist in the top right hand corner and I'll put it in the description as well, but we've been making this fantasy building and we've made this section by section, first looking at the bottom and the stone walls, then having a look at this sort of wood and plaster section, and then outside of this I've made this top roof part. This follows exactly the same process as this floor here. Uh, the only reason I did that off camera is because I forgot to press record so I spent five minutes talking to myself like a crazy person while I was doing it but you can see this has got exactly the same process where all I've done is left a small gap between each of the different wooden bits like we did over here and then I'm using this wall to basically join everything together when it comes time to boolean things so exactly the same process as what was done down here and the other thing I've done which was on an earlier video is have a look at how to make an array of tiles and we looked at how to combine them together really effectively that was in a past video again I'll put the link in the top right hand corner and in the description so you can have a look at that if you're not sure what to do with making an array and now we're going to make the tiles and there's a couple of ways we could do this we could just be doing it with arrays as well but I want to make something a bit more interesting so we're going to talk through what I'm going to do here I'm going to actually do this in two stages I'm going to talk about the old way in inverted commas and then I'm going to talk about the new way of doing this which brings in even better options but the first way is important to understand because I need you to get what we're doing so let's start straight away by making our tile. So I'm just gonna press Shift and A, Mesh, and I'm gonna bring in a cube. We've got that there. Let's just move it off to the side somewhere. And I wanna change the sizes of this. So what I'm gonna do is press N to bring out the end panel. And I'm gonna change the dimensions to be, let's say 20 in the X and then 10 in the Y. I've picked that because it's gonna be fairly easy to do things with it later. And then I'm just gonna press G and move this off to the side. Now, for what we're going to do later, the origin point is very, very important for this. And we want that origin to be on, well, it could be anywhere, but it's going to make life easier being on this back sort of portion. And I'm going to put it on a corner so that everything's easier to see. So I'm just going to go into vertex mode and using machine tools, I'm going to press shift and S and move the object to the vertex. Now you will notice that if I go into object mode, that then fiddles around with the rotation because it's moved the origin to that normal. So I'm just going to press control and A and I need to apply the rotation and I need to apply the scale. So I'm going to do that. So we've got everything rotation is zero and scale set as one. And that is very important for this to work. So always make sure your rotation and scale has been applied. Now that we've got that sorted, we're gonna bring in the thing that we're going to put this onto. And effectively, we want to make a grid. So the easiest way to do that and to explain it is if I press Shift and A, Mesh, and bring in a plane, and I'll bring this to the side so you can sort of see what we're doing. So I'm just gonna bring that up there, and I'm gonna scale this up a lot. So I'm just gonna press S, make this really big, just so you can get what we're doing for now. And again, I'm gonna press Control and A and apply the scale. And again, that's very important for making sure this works. So we're gonna use something called instancing. Now we could just do this making an array. So we'd make an array in one direction, then we will make an array in another direction and then array that. So we'd basically have an array of an array of an array and that works fine. And actually for the basic thing that we're gonna do here, that would work and give effectively the same results, but there's gonna be something very powerful that we're gonna do later when we talk about this in the newer version of instancing. So let's go through the basics of instancing first of all, just so you know what's gonna happen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna ask Blender to instance, basically make a copy of this on each of the vertices. So we're gonna get a copy there, 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 and there. So basically we're gonna end up with one there, one there, one there, and one there, if this works correctly. If I go into X-ray mode, you can see we've got that one there, it's just under it. So that's what we're gonna want. Now, the first thing with instancing is they need to have the same origin. So we're gonna move this to this one with machine tools, that's really easy. I'm just gonna press Control and A and it's moved it. If you don't have machine tools, you're gonna to need to snap the cursor to there, then snap the tile to the cursor. So that's the first thing. Then we just need to select the object, shift select the thing we want to instance to, press Control and P. In fact, actually let's just shift and D so I've got a copy of this for later. So Control and P and we want to parent and then we select the plane and we come over here to our object properties go down to instancing and we want to instance on the vertices and you'll see, there we go, just as I said, we've got that. If I just press F2 and call this tile and then H to hide this, you can see what we've done here. So this is really useful to use because what we can do is just go to the vertices and anytime we move this vertex, it's gonna move the instances. So I can just select those two G and X 
and I can move that to somewhere like there so we've got a little gap. And what's really cool about this is we can actually set this to be a specific size. So make sure that your auto merge vertices is off and then just press GG, slide it all the way over here and then G and X. And I want this to be 20.5. So I now know that this was 20 wide. So that is a half a millimeter gap, pretty helpful. And then I can do the same thing with these. So GG all the way up and then G and Y. And I want this to be, let's say 10.5. And we've got that there. So that's instancing, really cool. And this gets very easy because if I just grab these two, all I need to do is press E to extrude them and I'm making another set. So I can just press X and then again, I want that 20.5. And then if I just press Shift and R, every single time I'm making a duplicate because Shift and R just redoes that function. It's probably easier to see it from the bottom. And then if I press Alt on the bottom one, I can just press E again on the Y and I want this to be 10.5 minus and then shift and R. And it's so much faster and easier than using an array. I'm just going to undo all of that till we get back to here and we're actually going to sort this out so it looks like tiling. So what I'm going to do is Alt select there and what I want is actually G and Y. I want to go back so we're halfway back. So I'm just going to go back, let's say 5.5. So we're halfway along. And we've got this horrible overlap, but we can fix that. So if I find my tile, bear in mind that this one's just the copy, we want our original one here. So if I just come in here and type in tile, and make that visible, if I come here and then press R, everything rotates. So I can just do, let's say, to there. So there's a little bit of an overlap, which is going to be useful later. I can H to hide that again. And we've got our tiles at our correct angle. And then I can just do exactly the same thing again. So let's Alt select that edge there. E on the Y. And we want that 5 and then minus. So it's in the correct direction. And then Shift and R. And we've got loads and loads and loads and loads and loads of tiles. Really quick. Very, very nice. Let's do a couple more just to be safe. Now, the final thing we want to do is actually make these offsets so they look well like tiles normally do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just press Alt and select there. Every other row, G and X, and I can move that along. And I'm going to move that along 10. That's half the length of one of these tiles. And there we go. We've got our lovely looking roof. And all we need to do is come to our plane and we can do whatever we want, like press R to rotate it so it's the right angle. And then we can put that in place and we can delete out any excess tiles that we don't need. Brilliant, instancing, love it. Just gonna undo that to here. So big question then is, well, what the hell's the point in that? Like I could have just done this with arrays. And yes, I actually find this easier to do with instancing. Uh, you can do it this way. If you do decide to do it this way, just note down that you need to press Control and A and then make instances real so that each of these becomes its own object. But that is definitely a valid thing to do. Equally, instancing is a valid thing to do as well. Now, the reason that we're actually doing this is to demonstrate what instancing is because actually we can do something far, far more powerful now. And that is thanks to geometry nodes. And this is going to be a very nice geometry node to have to play with if you haven't used geometry nodes before. This is going to be really simple. So please do stay with this if you normally don't use geometry nodes and give this a go. So what we're going to do is we are going to stop the instancing because we don't want that going on. We just want our plane. And I'm just going to get rid of this tile just so that we've sorted that out because I want to demonstrate some things later on using our tile that's here. So that was great as a roof, but it's not really very realistic unless it was like an entirely new roof. In reality, tiles generally get broken over time and we want to show that. So what I'm gonna do is just Shift and D and then I'm just press Shift and R to make a few copies of that. In fact, let's make quite a few. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now let's add some damage to these. I'm just going to press Alt and W and use Box Cutter. But if you don't have Box Cutter, you can use something else. For example, you could just use normal Booleans to do this. So all I'm going to do is just come to top down view and I'm just going to cut out random bits of these tiles so that we've got some ones that are damaged in different ways. 
I don't want anything too big or too outrageous, but just something that looks like sort of random bits of damage. And let's leave one that's not damaged. So at the moment we've got all these tiles, W to get out a box cutter, and I want to apply these really quickly. Let's get rid of that M panel. So let's just grab those, Control and A, and let's visual geometry to mesh. And then now all of these booleans that we did box cutter are now sorted. If you haven't got box cutter, there's some links in the top right hand corner and in the description coming up, and that's some good guides to box cutter. It is a paid for add-on, but it does, as you saw, speed things up vastly. So we're gonna instance these onto our vertex points, just like we did before. But this time, using this one, we don't have to move things around. So we don't have to make sure the origins are in the same place or anything like that. We can leave them anywhere we want, as long as the origin is in the correct place for where we want it being copied to, so the corner there. And what's cool about this is that we can make it select one of these at random. Now to do that, we have to put these into a collection. So I'm gonna to come to the top right hand corner here and I'm gonna right click and I want to get a new collection and we're gonna call this tiles. Then I'm just going to select all of these. I'm going to press M and I'm going to move them to the tiles collection. And now we've got all of those cubes in the tiles collection. And then we just need to make our geometry node. So let's go through this bit by bit. Now, the first thing I'll say before we even begin is that I haven't angled these yet. So we're going to have to fix that at some point, but I'll show you through that. And I want to do that last so you can see how to do that and the important bits of what makes a difference for the geometry nodes. So we're going to come over here, add modifier and geometry nodes. That sets up our geometry node here and we need a place to edit it. Now I've got this actually in the bottom. I'm going to get rid of that just to show you how to get this. So if you don't have this, all you need to do is drag up, move your mouse down to one of the bottom corners. You can also do it in the top corners as well until you get this targeting reticule, drag up and then in this box here, which is the editor type, we just need to change that to geometry nodes and then we can press new. And we've got our geometry node for this object. And you can just use the normal controls if you haven't done this before. So scroll in and out on your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. And if you want to bring in a new node, just like it'd be to bring in a new object, it's just shift and A. And we want to bring in an instancing node. And actually there's a nice little bit that says instances and we want instances on our points. And we're gonna put that here. So we've got a geometry going in to say where the points are and then it coming out, but nothing's here. That's because we haven't told what to instance yet. So we could put any one of these in. For example, I could just grab one of these tiles, drag that in here. We get what's called an object info node, put that to the geometry to the instance, and we've got all our instancing. Let's just delete that because we don't want one of them. We want a random selection of any of them. And to do that, we do it the same way, except if we just drag in from the collection. So I'm just going to drag the collection bit here, and we get what's called a collection info node. There is another way, let's just make this a little bit larger. There is another way of doing this. If you just press shift and A and type in info and then bring collection info, you can just select whichever one you want, for example, tiles. Either way, it's the same thing. And we need to click separate children and reset children. That just allows this to function correctly. And then we put the geometry into the instance. And you'll notice we've got the same thing, except for it looks like a mess. We've got all this fighting on the faces, and that's because at the moment it is putting one of all of these at that point because we haven't told it to pick an instance. So as soon as I click pick instance, it's got this working. Now we've still got this overlap because we haven't moved the tiles around yet. So let's do this over here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of these, and then importantly, I'm gonna change this so it's on the individual origin, and then I'm gonna press R, move that around to let's say there, and then I just press Control and A and apply the rotation. And then the rotation has been applied. Now I want to actually this a little bit less than that. So I'm going to press R, do a little bit less, Control and A and rotation again, just so we've got that little bit of overlap that we wanted. Now there is another way of doing this. I could go into vertex mode on this. So just grab all of these, go into vertex mode and rotate it that way. The reason I'm not doing that if anyone was about to say that in the comments, is that you can see they're not all actually perfectly aligned. So this would cause me some other individual problems, but you could do it that way. So now we've got, if I just bring this down, all of my instances, look at them. Fantastic. A nice bashed up looking roof. In fact, actually, maybe it's a little bit too bashed up, I think. Like it's looking a little bit over the top here. So let's deal with that. 
So what you'll notice is that this is actually selecting these, and at this point it's selecting them in order, which actually is a little bit of a problem because it makes it a little bit obvious. For example, we've got this large gap there and then the same one there and so on. So this does cause a little bit of repetition at points for example, here we've got this big cutout and then the one that's more circular and we've got the same one there. This is actually just doing them in order. Well, we'll deal with that in a second and we'll talk about that in case that's actually a bother to anyone. But we do want more of these non-damaged tiles. So all I'm going to do is just press Shift and D and make a new one. And then Shift and D and make a new one and Shift and D and make a new one. And you can see this is changing each time because each time I'm doing this, it's adding it to the collection, which means that we get more of these non-broken tiles. And effectively, this allows you to directly control the proportions of what you want. If you want more of them with this chip, just make another one and you've got double of them. So it's a really nice way of being able to control things nice and easily. Though what we do have now is that we get all of these non-damaged ones in a row because these are being selected one after another. It's just picking them one, then the other, then the other. So what we can do here is actually change this by using this instancing index to effectively make this more random. So if I just press Shift and A and search for random and bring in random value, and if I just drag that in there, at the moment, we're getting anything between zero and one. We don't want zero and one. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So I want anything between one and 14. And now this is a bit more random. This is, still isn't actually perfect, but it's about as good as we can do. It at least puts things not in the direct order that we've got here. And if you wanna change that, you also have the option of changing the seeds so you can fiddle around with that. There probably is another way of making this more random. If you did some maths here, like a random value multiplied by another random value, I guess you could do that as well. So there are lots of options here of making this more or less random. Either way, we've got our roof, and I'd say this looks perfectly respectable as a roof and being a little bit more random. Now at this point, just like we did before, we do need to make sure that these instances become real. And for some reason, this is named differently on a geometry node. Let me just bring this up so we've got more space. So I'm just gonna press Shift and A, search, and then realize, and we use this realize instances, and that's gonna make these actually real, which is important, otherwise they disappear when we delete our plane, or if we apply this. And there is one last thing that we can do, which is even more cool, which is we can actually just make this so these automatically Boolean together. So Shift and A, we want a Boolean, and it's a mesh Boolean. Bring that in here. We don't want this to be a difference. We want this to be a union. And we just drag that there. And what's interesting about this is that it actually booleans on the objects that are in the node. So this is actually all gonna be one solid object, which means we don't have to Boolean things later. At this point, I'm gonna get this in place and we can start fiddling with this, but I'm pretty much done with my geometry node. So I'm just gonna bring that down there. So we've got this, let's bring this to the correct place. So I'm gonna press G, let's bring that to about there, because I'm gonna get rid of all of these loose individual tiles. So somewhere to about there, it should be about right. And then this is going too far, I don't need this one. So if I go into vertex mode, all I can do, if I just go into isolation, this is a bit difficult to see when you're on a full screen, is I can just get rid of this last line here. So I'm just gonna press Control and X, and that's just deleted one of our things of tiles. So it gets really quick and easy to sort of modify and play around with. And I am gonna cut off these tiles, so object mode. So finally, let's come to the side. I'm going to R to rotate this round. That's G to get it in place, somewhere about there. So it's gonna go into the wood. That looks pretty good. And I do want to take off all of these extra ones. So exactly the same thing. Vertex mode, X-ray mode to select all of them. And that one's probably a little bit unneeded as well. So let's delete and that vertex as well. And there we go. We've got our roof. So very simple to do. It just takes a little bit of knowledge about how this instancing works to get all of this randomly chosen. Obviously, you could just do this with an array. Traditionally, what you'd have done is done this with an array or done this with instancing, make them real, and then start chipping out individual bits of each of the tiles, and you'd have been there forever. So I'm just going to get rid of this, these extra bits that we don't need. So I'm going to press Alt and W, change this to a box cut, and I'm just going to get rid of 
let's say that oh actually this is a lot of the times much faster to do if you apply the geometry node first and as always with blender and this is quite new it is worth saving fairly regularly just in case it decides to crash so let's apply all cut out that bit there and then come over here and do exactly the same over here and you'll notice that i've quite intentionally left a little bit here so we get this interesting sort of zigzag otherwise everything looks too aligned and it just doesn't look really correct so there we go there is our roof so hopefully that instancing idea has been really useful and how to get those random tiles there's a lot of application for this in this random instancing it is really really helpful for saving a lot of time and for doing something that would have been a really long and tedious manual task in something that really can get done very quickly if you've got any cool ideas of where you think might use this please do say in the comments section i love to hear things from you guys about what you're doing and what you think of these different ideas and tools and if you want to see how this building turns out and you're not subscribed already please do hit that subscribe button have a great day guys